Hey, Travis. Welcome. Just going to make some adjustments here. Put the air conditioner on. Flick the old hair back. Try to make that look interesting. Hey Daniel. Oh, Mr. Daz here. Paul Daz. Welcome. Been a while since I've seen you. Hope you're doing alright. Hope you're actually getting around and not suffering too much. Hope you managed to get some relief on your back after all this time. Dragon, yes, I'm um, taking lots of fibre in my diet. Ah, Travis, you got your first job. Congratulations. Okay. Uh, let's open up this box and see what I've got inside. Yeah, this isn't going to be much chop. Well, I guess I'll cut through it quickly and we'll get into it. I don't really have a Dave Jones style... Crocodile Dundee knife. It's got a pretty standard, modified, double ended hook and stab. Yeah. Uh, yeah, okay. Got a bunch of instructions on there. Better put this down on the floor so I don't reveal too much. Yeah. Oh wow, it's like it's like past the parcel. One layer's done, we've got another layer to go. Sink is off. Oh dear lord. Okay, be right back. Alright, here we go. Oh, these are trickier, these ones. Hey Rodrigo, Paul's watching the International Cricket World Cup, who we got today? India versus who? Or is it Pakistan? I don't really get to keep track of it much these days. I mean as a kid I'd always watch it. That's where I first, le first learnt all about anxiety. Hey, Rick Tech. Okay. Yeah, we've got more past the parcel stuff here. These people are serious. I can actually see some MacBooks now. Two separate ones. Let's see if we can find something that I actually have a chance of repairing. Ha <laughs> here we go. This looks like a my kind of generation of MacBook. Well, you gotta get serious with your packaging in Australia. Well, actually that's not true. No matter where you go in the world, you've got to get serious with your packaging. Because if you're not serious with your packaging, the packaging companies can sense it. And they know exactly where to give it a good swift kick. Okay, so we've got an A1502, which is very much my thing. A Bulgaria, Digital Monkey. Just slice this one open, hopefully not my leg. It's not really it's not a pretty thing to do. Slice and open your leg with a knife like that. I remember at school some kid did that. To be fair, he was a bit of a jerk, so I kinda laughed. But he was in um we we're in 
English class actually, funnily enough, the 1706. Alright. Uh, I just realised I didn't bring a container down for this. That was a bad move, Paul. It's okay, we'll just randomly throw things around the room. Yeah, well, in English class, and even with my deafness state, I could hear this <coughs> sort of noise. And it was a kid with his own pocket knife, and he um, was slicing the heel of his shoe off. And all of a sudden, you hear, <coughs> and then this sort of slightly squishy noise. And he managed to slip and get the knife right up his calf. It made a mess, but like I said, I found it quite amusing because I never got along with the person. They were quite... I was very much a um, bullying victim a lot of the times at school because of my hearing aids and the fact that I was just generally quiet. Uh, let's see... And he was a particular person that certainly liked to dish out the bullying Da, da, da. Funny, I find it very hard to read for some reason. Hmm. Alright. Hey, Wade. Where is my magnet? be a magnet in there. some boards that have been going through the clean process. Okay, let's get this thing apart. Oh, wait. What's the fault with this? It doesn't power up as far as I know. Uh, unfortunately, we've got some revealing information sort of here, so I'll just put that aside. Hey, graphics. Hey, Keith McDermott. Now, hey, the B4. I do wonder if the person who has sent this in is actually here. I tried to advise them that I was going to do the stream, and I'm just not sure whether they could make it or not. So if you are here, feel free to let me know. Five milliamps. That's it. 5 milliamps, that's all we're getting. No green light, nothing. Alright. I kind of like those ones. These ones actually have a chance of being repaired. Hey, Ahmed. And tomorrow I've got to take a trip out of town. Hopefully it shouldn't take me too long. I'll give Micro his insulin injection first thing in the morning, then scoot off. And hopefully be back before it gets too hot during the day. And then I can get on with other work. It always feels weird when you take an early morning trip to another town and then come back and get on with your normal day. It's just one of those bizarro things. Kind of like when you wake up too early and you enjoy the beautiful morning and then you pass out for about half an hour or an hour back in bed and then you wake up again. It feels like you've gone through a second day or something. Hey Ernest, Timel, no green light. Ah. Alright, got some weird metallic looking particulate on there. Unfortunately it's the Samsung drive. It doesn't exactly bode well for the data but at least it's a start. Okay, we'll get this battery disconnected. 
We got that drive out. If you do these repairs and just um, let people know if they do have these same sound controller drives that they should consider. Okay, we've got liquid under there. Hmm. Not sure what exactly it is. Ah, uh, my face is partially covered. Alright. It's a bit of a trick. Let me try and shift. Now you're going to end up with something closer to crotch cam. There you go. Uh, I don't know what it is yet. It might be 34th 76. Who knows? Let me just see if I can... Okay, this is... Something water-based, sugar-based. Yep. See, so it wouldn't come off with pure alcohol, but then... You put the slight water mix in there and... It comes right off, so that's... Just pure alcohol, didn't really come off. 20% water, comes off. Kind of looks like Coke. Maybe I should taste it and try. You can see the J tags. Wow, that's rare. Yeah, I know everybody likes to beat on the J tags on this, but this one really and truly actually is a legitimate candidate for removal in this case as opposed to a innocent bystander in which most of them are Um, yeah, Ambul calling an ambulance probably wouldn't be a bad idea if I was to try and sample that. Come on, now you come. Okay. Got to use your fingernails to get those camera cables out. Do not yank on the cable. Not unless you're a professional. You pull that cable out by the, you know, pull this camera connector out by the cable and eventually you'll end up pulling it out of the socket itself, the connector, and you won't like it. You won't like it if even a tiny bit, so don't do it. <laughs> I am pleased to say that I've never done that, but I have seen other people do it. <sighs> and they're not tears of joy that they emit afterwards. Eric, the problem with the drivers is they just die. They're starting to die quite a lot. Hey, KV. Fantastic. Good to see you. Well, here we go, Kieran. Actually, is it Kyron or Kieran? Because, interestingly enough, my nephew's name is Kyron, but spelt differently. Hey, Steve K. So, Karen, was it Coke that got into this machine? Because it sure looks like it so far. Unless it's something else that degenerated into something that looks like Coke. Other way, I'm not game to taste it. This is one that's always amused me. They put a Phillips head on the end of this one. It's like you put torques everywhere else, but you put a Phillips head at the end there. Uh, it takes forever to get these out. Still not as bad as a 17, 18, 19 series.
What have we done? I'd be glad if it's coke syrup, yes. Yeah, the alternatives are a little more frightening. Okay, we don't have any splatter field down on the bottom, so that's a good thing. There is some level of corrosion down there, but I think the real one is, this would be a laugh if it was just the JTAG. Like I said, I can see this even from without the microscope. That is a write-off. Now this one here, yes, you would remove that for sure. That's, that's doing the humane thing, removing that one, as opposed to what other people often do. Too many JTAGs lose their lives through drive-by shootings. Thirty-four seventy-six. Yep. I'm gonna look at everywhere else first before I pull the JTAG. I want to make sure I don't get all excited. That's a pretty color. I remember with the A1466 boards, there will be one of these on the board. And when you first do your repairs on that board, your eye gets drawn to it and you think, Haha, it's a burnt part, yay, I found the fault. And it's really not. It's just a, there's, we've got a bit of a junk here, we'll have to clear that off. But at this point, if we're truly fortunate, this is going to be a JTAG job. I mean, there's already odd, the odd bit of dust and crap and whatnot, but it's certainly nothing major. So, let's see if it's a JTAG. I also don't believe in the horrendously ham-fisted butchering of them. I'm more than content to gently ease them off into their new life in the rubbish bin. It's an opportunity to have some practice of not melting connectors. It smells like coke. Got that good old burnt toffee smell. Mmm, now I want some toffee. Uh, a couple of the pads have taken a hit, well, particularly like that one right there. Shouldn't be a major issue.
I'm using some more of the 20% water alcohol mix to get that coke off. There's a bit of a mess here too, but that probably will just come off with a bit of scrubbing. As long as nothing's shorted here, it should be okay. Gee, these test pads are a bit beaten. Ah, oh, well, let's see what happens now. Hey, ZX, oh, your timing's pretty good. I'm about to have the big show and tell. Put that in. Get our 18 volts. Let's see if we have any further luck. Ooh, I saw a green light then. There we go. We've got a fan spin. That's it. That was all it needed. Well, in theory. I should plug it back in to make sure. And I would probably give this board a good wash over. Wash that up a bit better. Are we talking about left-handed people here now? And this is the 100% alcohol. You put that on afterwards and that helps suck up the last bits of the water from the first lot. Mind you, it shouldn't make a big difference anyway because this stuff you know, goes through the ultrasonic and then it goes into the oven. Okay. I suppose we should plug it into the whole main unit, make sure that it actually is running. It could have almost come good with an ultrasonic, maybe, but it, it would have likely end up still deteriorating afterwards again. Oh dear goodness. There we go. I always tell when you've got it. The board suddenly be feels a lot freer in falling down. There we go. In spite of the fact that I've got all my lights on in this workshop, this section here is still frustratingly dark. Now tomorrow when I go into Townsville, I should really look at getting something like a 100 watt ambient diffused panel or something 
But the trouble is I'll chicken out. I'll have a look at it and I'll um and I err uh, and I'll go, oh, you know, if really shouldn't be spending the 250 bucks or whatever on that. Got other things I should be spending it on. I should be saving up. Yeah, all that sort of stuff. The usual sort of buyer's pre-remorse stuff. And of course then you do buy it. Like if you do buy it, you bring it home and you're like, yay, I've got my panel. Life's going to be so much better. And then it just sits and it sits and it sits and it doesn't get installed for months. It's half the reason to pay electricians, I think, or, or people who can do this stuff is just so that it will actually get done. Because if it's up to me, <laughs> it's pretty hard to get things done. There's too many other competing demands on my time at the moment. Real men use the dishwasher. Uh, I've done that once. I destroyed my IBM M keyboard with that. The main dumb fault. I should have... Should not have let it get to the dry phase. Because anyone who knows the inside of dishwashers knows there's a great big heating element there and that kind of melts plastic. <coughs> Uh, let's see. Oh, we can MRI this one. Ah, oh, hello, Shad. Supposing I'm supposed to know who Shad is, but really I don't know who Shad is. And then on the other hand, apparently Shad is actually really a uh, bad word or something. I don't know. What does the ultrasonic cleaner look like? It's just a metal box. It's nothing fancy at all, to be honest. Ah, I didn't plug the battery in. We need the battery plugged in so we can be sure it's charging. Annoying person on Discord with the bot. There's a lot of people on Discord with bots. It was a mixture of berry smoothie. Closest way to pronounce it was Kiran. Okay. Must have had a fair bit of sugar in it because it sure smelt like the classic uh, Coca Cola toffee type smell. Anyway. Here we go. What's a good replacement for the same sung drive? If you can get one of the same size, but um, let me see if I can find the controller type. Otherwise, damn it, who are they? Um, Transcend produce replacements now. If you go to Ram City, uh, ramcity.com.au, they have Transcend replacements for the same songs. Uh, I'm not sure what the brand name of this one is, but but it's got like a M letter there rather than the Samsung ones. But yeah, if you can get your hands on one of those brands, then they're okay. But otherwise, yeah, just buy a new one from Ram City, AU, Transcend brand. Make sure you get the right one because there'll be two types. There'll be the AHCI. And then there'll be the MVME ones. You gotta get the right one for the right machine. Can I get a link for this USB image you are using? Um, yeah, I don't. Um, hmm. You might have to try Discord on that. I can't really offer any distribution of this at the moment. I probably shouldn't be having it myself, but I do. Thank you, Pernov. Thank you. That's the number I was after. The 820. I, I've done a couple of 480 gig ones and they seem to be working okay. I think Pernov was bringing up some possible um, sleep issues or power down state issues, but uh, so far I haven't come across anything, but I think he was more referring to the ones where they would take a 
generic NVMe drive or something like that and put just a physical adapter on it and I think there were issues there. Uh, Joe, if you've got a question, just ask it. Hey Cam. Hey Aussie Geek. Hey Lars. Yep, already fixed it. But I've got another one coming. Tranquil the Cat, do you use an isopropyl bath in the Sonic Cleaner or do you use some other secret sauce? Uh, here in Australia we get something called um, Ambacil. That's just what its brand name is, Ambacil Ultrasonic Cleaning Fluid. You mix it down at a 5 to 1 ratio. So if I put you know, a full 5 litre container of distilled water in and then one, uh, one litre of this cleaning fluid, and, and it lasts me a couple of months usually. I get it from Element 14 here in Australia. Hey Mitch. Okay, well, it looks like everything's good except the touch bar's not working. Seriously? Touch bar not working? What's going on here? So we haven't come out quite so good yet. The keyboard work at all. Let's try to press the power off. Yep, power off works. Ah, oh, sorry, yeah, uh, trackpad. It's late. And naturally, oh no, it's one of these ones that goes under the battery. Let's have a look at the trackpad. Let's see if we've got any corrosion. That's another place to steal memory chips, it seems. Well, the trackpad was working fine on this before, wasn't it? Oh, uh, hello. What's this? There's some goop under the memory there. Maybe I didn't put this in quite far enough. Let's just see. Oh, seems like that's legit. wonder if it just locked up on me. I just want to see whether it was the actual MRI software that locked up or whether it is actually a non-functioning trackpad. Not that the MRI should have even caused it to lock up as far as I know. Anyway, we'll find out in a couple of seconds whether it does work while it's running. Okay, it is working. So, it must have just locked up. Didn't like it for some reason. Now, that could be a RAM fault, potentially. I don't know. See, we've got my mem check. <laughs> Bent pin, maybe, maybe. Just seems strange that it dies at the end. I consider that a slightly ominous type indication. So. If I boot, I'm just going to run the memory checker. 
And I can put this off to the side while I work on the next machine. Okay. <coughs> I'll just get it started before I put it over to the side. Broken Mini 910 motherboard. Can I get the replacement chip from the Mini 910 board? Uh, let's see. I think half the problem here is I'm not sure what's a Mini 910. Alright. This is doing its thing. Let's see how it goes. I'm just going to put this off to the side. Oh yeah. We'll have a look at the next machine. This one, I believe, has problems where you open it and the screen flickers. So I'm wondering whether it's a screen flex issue or something else. Do you sometimes fix desktop PCs? I do, just not very often lately. I mean, I do a fair bit of the IT stuff whereby, you know, you change the hard drives and things like that. I'm getting a bit pushy lately with the hard drive scenario. Basically any machine that comes in, if it's got 500 gig or less in it, and if the drive is more than 12 months old or even two years old, I just tell them they should really change over to solid state. And the time it takes me to migrate to a solid state is usually saved with me not having to wait around for their system to boot while it gets through all its uh, viruses and stuff. What am I doing? Aren't you going to try the computer before you open it up? Yeah, it's bad habit. I want to see what's in here first before I try and turn it on, just in case there's some sort of rather extensive corrosion that I might miss. And then I might ruin its last chance. It is one of those predicaments, though. Where you sort of wonder, you know, which is the best option? Do you check it first? Man, these can be a pain to get open sometimes. done. Um, particularly on things like iPhones, I found that I do prefer to definitely open them up before powering them up, if I can. Oh, what is going on there? That just ripped right off. Be careful getting that off. So that's had a fair bit of fair bit of liquid going through that. I guess for me I prefer to do it this way because in the past I have lost one system because it was on its last gasp and I powered it up and it ran fine so to speak and then the next time I tried to bring it up it was just gone so I suppose I sort of from there on decided that's it I'm gonna do my best to always check them before I power them up hey Tom George yeah. Hey, Roy Brown. This could very well just be a flex gate. Mm. 
In which case, it should be covered by Apple. I'm fairly sure this model is covered by Apple, isn't it? To be fair, I don't know if it, Apple even does that in Australia yet. Cat whisker. Uh, okay, well, we've got nasty junk in here. Okay, amusingly, the liquid indicators haven't triggered, but uh, there's definitely been. Oh, wow. Okay. That there is will have been probably my fault. I got lucky there. Which I can pin that one back down. I must have just slipped the plastic spudger in just at the wrong point just then. Still, got lucky I could have taken out that sensor chip. This one here. That happens quite a bit. Uh, this here bothers me. Hey, Mark Prince. 13 inch, 26, 17, 78, others are not, except you, you can cause stain gap. Oh, yeah, okay, yep. Hey, Mark, some side, hey, Ed. Tony W, those plastic compartmentalized boxes you're using for screws, such a specialist item. Uh, let's see. I got them from Element 14. They're made by a company called Duratech, I think. And at the time, they were of limited supply. So I bought up every single one I could. And I still keep running out. What makes them good is that they do not... Um, let's see. Let's show it here. Hey, Warren Stamps and Dilly Kumar. Let's see. Okay, the, the thing with these is that it's not a removable grid tray. There's no gaps under here it's all a single sealed piece and also when you close the lid down on it the the fit is sufficiently good that if you do happen to tip the container over it doesn't uh, spill parts into adjoining compartments let's see if I'm going to find a product number on the underside of any of these I'd be surprised if I do though because I've kind of made a point of yanking the stickers off because they annoyed me yeah. Interestingly, they're made in Italy. I'll just see that now. Alright, well, I'll best fix up that little spot of damage that was by my hand. Knocking that cap off. It's kind of hilarious. The times I try to knock the cap off without... Um, yeah, when I'm really trying to get something off, I can't do it. And then when I'm not looking, I do. It's pretty typical. I think I'm going to put some leather down on that. I'm pretty sure I did this. I'm almost absolutely 100% sure I did this. It was too fresh, too clean. I'm definitely going to claim that one.
I'm having trouble getting in there. This is where I really need something like a KU tip. And then again, a KU tip doesn't exactly have the thermal mass that can cope with this. No, it's not taking solder very well at all. If I feel like it's not going to really come good, I will just have to wait till I take the board out and then hot air it. Well, bridging's a good sign. People are probably like, what? How's that a good sign? Because it means it's getting the area hot enough. <laughs> now I'm just slowly picking out the excess. I really need to put some more flux down here. I don't want to, but I'm going to have to. Welcome to why you shouldn't work on machines too late at night. No, right, it'll, it'll come clear in a second. That's what I keep telling myself. <laughs> oh, come on, come clear. There we go. Alright, it's left them a little bit puffy, but they'll be okay. I mean, I don't want to put too much flux down there. The reason being is because it'll make a... Like, if I don't have to get this out for a reflow... Uh, not a reflow, a um, ultrasonic, then that would be really good. And so, by using as little flux as possible that I can get away with means I have a chance of cleaning it up using these little chaps. The only trouble is the more the liquid runs, the more you kind of got to clean up after it. Okay, we'll hold that for now anyway. Well, I can't say anything truly, truly catastrophic other than the fact that we do have liquid damage coming in down here, though it is away from the center of the screen port. Um, I might lift this connector here and have a look. TX3. Oh, dear God, I'm an idiot. Oh no. Alright, I really have to apologise if I have done this. I was doing that with the battery connected. Oh sweet Bridget. The stupid mistakes you make. Alright, that's a really bad, bad thing. You watch, I'm going to have 100 people recall their devices from me now. Truly stupid. See, here we go. Yeah, no kidding, disconnect the battery. Well, thank God we're getting 20 volts still at least. Yeah, just privacy filter. Yeah, I know, I know, but this is not the sort of thing I should have messed up on. The drawer in 20 watts.
Still not coming up. I can see the screen backlight. No, I can s This screen is actually damaged. There's... Uh, I'm not sure if you can see it. You can see it's fired up. But all down here, the backlight's blooming. Alright, cold sweat developing. CPU's warm. Things are changing. I think the screen is actually just cactus. Okay. No, I probably should have stopped when I'd done with that first one. No, it certainly seems to be up and running. Yeah, it's, it's definitely had liquid damage crawling up that side, but like I said again, there's still doesn't nullify the mistake I made. Uh, okay, I'm gonna. This is gonna be a bit of fun. I have to move my chat window to the side, and I'm gonna plug in an HDMI cable. Yeah, come on. I can't remember whether these ones have to have the screen removed before the HDMI fires off or not. So I will remove that off first. TX3. Uh, so now I've got the cold sweat running. Obviously, you're not going to be able to see this. I'm fixing things, I'm breaking things, that's what I'm doing. Embarrassingly so, I'm afraid. I was soldering a pair of a cap that I knocked off and um, the battery was still connected. Okay, well the good news is that I've got a battery charge symbol on screen. Flippin' heck. Took about giving me a freaking heart attack. So at least we know it's partially running. I'm then going to deliberately connect this battery back on and see if we can get a full boot. As a general rule, I try not to repair these more recent ones while on stream because I legitimately do prefer to keep my mind wits about me. Whereas things like the 1466s, 1502s, yeah, the, the sort of the classic good MacBooks, uh, then yeah, I'll, I'll do those on stream, no problem. These ones, I think we might uh, take this as a sign to not do them for a little while yet on stream. Okay, 
Alright, so we're up and running again, 20 volts, 1.5 amp, I'm just waiting to see if it comes up on the screen. <coughs> we've got an Apple logo. Just waiting for it to boot. But I mean, yeah, let's. Yeah, at least it's up and running. Hopefully, it doesn't take too long. Yeah, the suspense is a killer. Uh, the original falls of the screen misbehaving and it just looks like, from what I can see of the backlights, it just looks like um, liquid's gotten up into there. Ooh. Yeah, something else is amiss on this system. Unless it was the HDMI output to the screen, it just yeah gave the old corrupted memory glitching look. I just booted reset password. Uh, I'm obviously not going to reset the password. I forgot my password. It's a trackpad words. Okay, exit. And let it do boot it again. Huh. Why did you choose to earn your money with hardware instead of software? I actually do both. Um, yeah, you know, I make no secret of the fact that. Okay, we've got a full boot. Okay, we've got a full boot, we've just got a bad screen. That's basically what it comes down to on this one. Can't all be Lewis Rossmans. Uh, who wants to be a Lewis Rossman anyway? I'll let that one burn. What was I going to say? Can't think now. Oh yeah, with the hardware versus software thing. I try to keep three different businesses running when I can and so I've got my software such as Flexboard View and a few other things I do on the side I've got the hardware repairs like this, the electronics and then of course I've got the general IT and basic phone screen replacements, things like that and between the three of those I generally manage to keep myself with food in the fridge and ice cream as a bonus every now and then all right. Okay. So it's it's booting. I can see the um, person's login and everything, but that's not relevant at this point. I would say that grime that we saw there it really is irrelevant. It uh, just needs a new screen put on it, and that's not something I'm going to do. I will leave it to someone else. Yish TV, yeah, it is. Um, it's a. It is a bit of a different part of the brain to exercise for doing that. I'm just going to disconnect the battery, in case I decide to do any probing around. I don't want to botch that up. Yeah, I got off lucky with that one. That could have been a significantly worse outcome, and thankfully it wasn't. So, I know when to cut my losses as it were no just I know when to stop doing something when I'm ahead okay, let's plug my HDMI cable back in I need to get myself a little 10 inch or 11 inch uh, full HD screen just haven't found one that I really think I want to buy yet no. okay here we are into the netherworld where the dust bunnies live Okay, should have the HDMI back now. Uh, uh, where are you? And I'm back, thank goodness. News on the kitties. The kitties that we rescued the other day, they are now in care, in foster care. So they'll be with their mother for the next two weeks at the very least. Um, the kittens I don't have too many fears about. I do still worry about the mother though. Even though she's only about seven, eight months old herself, 
um, it's a lot harder to rehome adult, so to speak, kittens. Personally, I don't think cats are really adults until they're about four years old, in my opinion. Okay, let, let, we'll say two. Yeah, two years old. Uh, the whole one-year thing for cats is... They're still babies at one year old. All right. Uh, yeah, this here, I don't know what liquid got into there, but that is really bizarre. Those things are not easy to get off, and so somehow that liquid certainly got into there and managed to eat away at that. It'd be interesting to find out what it was. Alrighty. So two things you need to do with that screen. One spot a light on it while it's running to see if it's showing data. Two, dim the light around, see if the backlight uh, the backlight I know is working. Um I really didn't bother to take it much further back back then because I right then wanted to know whether it truly was working properly. I plug it in the um what do you call it? Plug it in the external HDMI. That was more important at the time. But yes, I mean, yeah, you can put the light on it to see if you can get any data showing up. But just the fact that I could see the backlight bleed up through there, it was already telling me, it's like, well, this screen's got to be replaced anyway. I believe it was a flat white coffee. That must have a lot of caffeine in it or something because that... Um, yeah, it's just sort of ate the glue out of that. Uh, so there are this way we can kill the glue on the Apple devices. Drop them in coffee. Was it Nescafe, Blend 43, or International Roast? Oh, dear. So KB with that one. Yeah, I'd see if you can just get a screen replacement on it. It's not something I do. Um, I stick with the main board electronics type repairs and give myself heart attacks by repairing electronics while it's still connected to the battery like an idiot. Uh, welcome to the fact that I'm a human, yeah, unfortunately. Let's see, Rob Graham, lost one of your own... G oh, sorry to hear that, Graham. Really am. Got into the bone of the jaw. That is really not a nice way to go. I'm sorry about that. My condolences, of course. And, you know, when it comes to animals, I'm very you know, affected by that sort of thing. Well, KB, at least you've got one machine that we know is definitely working. Your A1502 is up and running. So if you get a replacement drive for that, it'll be good. Uh, obviously, it's still working now with the current drive, but, yeah, I would certainly... Either that or just have it backed up all the time. Talk about being regular now. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. I'm just trying to see what else I'm missing out on here. It's 11 o'clock at night. I think I'm pretty much done. Oh, um, as you all know, I normally use an iPhone 6S Plus, rose gold of all the colors, as my normal phone. Some of you will be really pleased to know that I've decided I'm not like, going to use the 6S Plus anymore. I've decided, nope, I've had enough of that. And so rejoice. And in its place, I'm using a 7 plus. <laughs> oh dear. I gotta admit, I'm not really enjoying the home button on these. I find it just. Um, what's this? Jason Vilmer's messaging me, probably telling me his latest exploits. If you're in the States and you've got an iPhone 10 issues, then uh, Jason Vilmer's exceedingly good with the iPhone 10s. Anyway, I'm. Not really liking the home button, but I guess it's something I'll get used to. And this one was one I sort of appropriated off someone else. I had to do some repair work on it. But I'm happy enough with it. We'll see how it goes. Let's see. For the 1502, I saw the keyboard pulsing when the trackpad wasn't working. Um, let's see. Do you mean the backlight was pulsing? Is that what you were talking about? I'll have another look at that tomorrow and see if I can, you know, catch anything else. There were... Uh, Yish TV, yes. SDS Jason. Jason Vilma. 
Stoma, depending on how you prefer to pronounce your V's. If you take the fact that he probably has, his name seems to have some sort of Germanic origins, and it could be pronounced as a F. So this, uh, the ram still seems to be going alright. It's on second pass already. Its first pass was fine, but I'd definitely probably still put it through an ultrasonic. Uh, the memory check's doing okay. So I consider that a pass for now. Let's see if the let's see, let's see, in test two. Well, the battery works because that just came off. Whoops. Oh well. Let's escape. Oh, here we go. The touchpad, uh, the trackpad's working fine there. So. Alright. Hmm. <coughs> Yeah, Jason produces some rather entertaining videos. He doesn't get to produce a lot of them. He seems to prefer to be a little less prolific and a little better quality, which is pretty much the antithesis of what I do. Would the screen be too expensive for that laptop? For the one that we just looked at before, I'm not really sure what they're like. They're about $600 or something fitted. <laughs> Ahmed, I'll rob the shop late tonight for those. So oh, yeah. Well, um, yeah, I kind of have to say good luck to you for that because you'll probably die trying to get into this house purely because of the amount of trash that I'll leave lying around. The place is a literal man trap. Uh, let's see. Oh, the Flexboard View update. Yeah. Direct all those to Rob Brown. No, just kidding. Um, basically, I keep stalling on getting the data out uh, it, because every time I think I'm ready to put the um, fixed up data out, I find something else wrong and I'm like, oh, you know, I don't want to release it like that. But I really do need to just do it, you know, so that everybody can then get on with you know, repairing phones and things like that. But, um, it's, and there's just been so many things going on around here. Like, I've, let's go back to this and see the dreary face, the liver spots poking up, the blotchiness and all that sort of stuff. <coughs> Sick of dingo on you. Oh, no. Well, at least I won't put a dingo on you like God did to, um, Hunts, whatever his name was, in Preacher. That was brutal. If you're a Netflix watcher and you've seen the series Preacher, you'll know what I'm talking about. But yeah, that was uh, damn brutal. And getting things replaced with a brass tap, that um, that made me cringe. That made me really cringe. All right. Okay, I've got to get out of here because I've got to be up moderately early so I can go into town so I can get things done. But, um, yeah, we had one win at least. Um, the second one, we sort of diagnosed, okay, we're going to need a new screen, not really my department. But... At least we know what we're looking at. And we didn't kill things, thank God. So I've got a bug to report though. PDF will not close when I close the board view. That's probably because you close the board view within one or two seconds of the um, of it coming up. It, it was meant to be a feature, but it's turned into a bit of a bug. I think if you find you wait three or four seconds, then it should close with it. Why is there a light in the fridge, not the freezer? Ah, that's changed these days. Our freezer has a light. Alright, okay, I'm out of here. Thank you all for watching. Thank you for watching me have my mini heart attack and seeing me go into cold shivers and stress attack. But uh, we got through it. So until the next time, which probably will be about maybe 24 hours time, if we're lucky, um, there'll be definitely no stream early in the morning because I will be on the road. But until next time, you all take care. Don't let a dingo take your balls. I'll see you later.